Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Ultimate General Civil War, and we're moving into the final campaign. In our last video, we played the Battle of Cold Harbor, which I allowed my army to get shot up way more than I should have. Uh, I really should have just kind of sat back and let the enemy come to me, but instead I played much more aggressively, and as a result I lost about 20,000 casualties. With that being said, we are moving into the Washington Campaign. The final battle of this campaign is the battle for Washington, D.C., but with the enemy army between 175 and 180,000 men, when they got their uh, refresh, they got about 100,000 replacements, we really need to weaken them because they're going to be in fortifications. So even though we won the Battle of Cold Harbor and the enemy army is 10% weaker, if we win these other two battles, um, beat the enemy at the Siege of Vicksburg, the morale loss of the Union army remains high. Wait, the Siege of Vicksburg? That's not even in the campaign. Unless one of these is the Siege of Vicksburg. Oh, it is Vicksburg. All right, well, that's weird. Anyway, so uh, we've got to sort of reduce their morale and also reduce their uh, quality of their weapons, as well as we already won the Battle of Cold Harbor. But in addition to those perks which we get from winning these two battles, we'll also reduce the size of the army that we face. Of course, we'll be attacking the enemy, so we risk losing... Uh, our own army's strength, but we do get a consolation prize of 20,000 reinforcements in both of these battles, so I expect these to be very bloody battles indeed, but it should allow us to get a stronger army in almost every case uh, if we win those battles. So that's really going to be my focus. Now, what we need to do here, first of all, before we can launch off on these sort of side battles that lead up to the final attack on Washington, is we need to go ahead and we need to uh, replace our casualties from the last battle of Cold Harbor. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and use as many rookies as we can, which is not very many, admittedly, in this Stonewall Brigade, and then we'll go ahead and spend 70, good lord, $70,000 uh, replacing our losses in the Stonewall Brigade, which is armed with Fayettevilles, the uh, best gun, in my opinion, in the army. The Henry has a really rapid fire, but I'm really not impressed by this thing. It is just not a very good gun in my, uh, my humble opinion. We'll go ahead and assign Major General A.P. Hill to command the Machine Gun Brigade, as we're calling it. We'll go ahead and assign some rookies, as many as we can, which again is not very many to keep this a three-star brigade. We can only assign 100 rookies. And then we can't even fill out our ranks with all of our troops uh, because we don't have enough guns, which is a good thing for my wallet because you can see here in and using veteran replacements here, I'm going to be spending a pretty penny, almost a hundred thousand dollars, to buy 881 uh, Henrys and also uh, some 881 veteran replacements. Almost back to full strength, though, as we eat up every single uh, Henry that we have potentially in our in our shop to purchase. Uh, with that being said, now we can kind of go ahead and get some of our other units uh, outfitted. So we'll go ahead and assign some rookies here and then some veterans as well. This is another three-star brigade. This first division is almost invariably entirely uh, three-star units. There's one two-star brigade there. Uh, the artillery is a two-star unit. Uh, and we'll also make sure all of the batteries are at least, I believe, 12 guns is the ideal size. So that's what we'll uh, make that battery is 12 24-pound howitzers. Uh, we'll go ahead and focus on the reserves for the rest of our forces. We'll see. I don't think we're going to have enough money to replace all of our losses, but we'll see how far we get. Um, we're going to go with firearms course. Increases your firearms skill, your reload time, and decreases your accuracy. Unless we want to go with marksman's training, although that increases your reload time. It does increase your accuracy. I think we'll actually go with that one for these guys. We can almost do everything with rookies here, but it looks like we're going to have to use some veterans. Still not spending much there. Um, a lot of these units actually don't need veteran replacements, or um, we're not really hurting ourselves by going with rookie replacements. They have a high enough experience level so that they can take up the, the replacements with ease. So that's good. I didn't expect to be spending so little on replacing our casualties in this first core outside of those first two brigades. Um, we'll go ahead and give them marksman training as well. And then these guys will need some veterans. So we'll have to spend about 28000 getting Beal's Brigade up to full strength, but it is what it is. These 24-pound howitzers additionally need some extra manpower, or extra guns, so we'll go ahead and assign two guns to them. So we've got two 12-gun 24-pound uh, batteries and a 16-gun 24-pound battery. 
And the first core is rebuilt with a little bit of money to spare. Um, maybe we want to actually have slightly larger batteries. I'm not sure. I'll think about that for a moment. And let's go ahead and get rebuilding the second core. Um, again, we'll focus on using rookies where we can. We've got plenty of weapons in our stockpile, I think. So I don't, I don't imagine we'll have to really spend much to buy any of these non-elite weapons. Actually, we've got... 1855 Springfields. We use the 1861, frankly, because it's a better gun, and we've got more of them. So we'll go ahead and replace this unit's main gun with 1861 Springfields. This guy's good. We'll go marksman. Barely. Dude, these guys have Enfields. Let's get their Enfields replaced with 1861 Springfields also. Because we can, so why not? Yes, sir. All right. Oh, all right. Let's assign a general here. We're down an officer. Also replace their weapons. They're still using 1855 Harper's Ferries. So we'll go ahead and bump them up to 1861 Springfields. Overall, the quality of our army's weapons are increasing here with some of these upgrades. It's Enfield's upgraded. I think we still have enough left over. Yep, just barely enough 1861s to equip this brigade. Um, Wow, the 4th Division really suffered some heavy casualties. Spent on quite a bit of money to replace that brigade's losses. These guys... We lost a lot of men, but at least we can do a fair number of rookies in there. They lost a lot of men, but they had some quite a bit of free XP, if you will. Ooh, a 14-gun battery here with these parrots, just so we can use up the 20-pounders 20, 20 that we have in our arsenal. 10-pound Tredegers. We've got two in our arsenal, so we'll upgrade them, because it's the only battery we have with Tredegers. Uh... Just round it out to make it a nice 18 guns. So we've replaced all of our losses in the first and the second core, minus some seven... Well, actually, this unit's still larger than it was before the last battle. So the first and second core are at full strength, over 32,000 soldiers each. The third core was a skeleton core in the first place. We only have 300 manpower uh, left over. Let's double check our uh, actual our officer core here. Did we replace all of our officers? We did. So we're just, we're not going to have enough manpower. We're going to be about 4,000 men shy of uh, sort of building out this core in its entirety. But that'll be fine. Um, these guys aren't going to go into battle anyway. I don't think we can have a three-core front in any of these upcoming fights. Let's go back and make sure we don't have any, let's have our best generals in command of these units. Major's fine for a two-star batter for a 12-gun battery, but for the infantry, let's just make sure if we've got any colonels, we replace them with uh, major generals. This is insane. This is the, our officers are just too highly ranked. We got lieutenant generals in charge of uh, divisions and major generals in charge of brigades. All right. That's the one kind of silly thing about this game is it becomes way too easy for officers to, to rank up. If anything, maybe more officers should be killed in the line. All right, so this unit needs to have its colonel replaced. And these two divisions actually need major generals, which we have a glut of major generals, so no issue there. We even have some unemployed uh, <laughs> brigadier generals. Put a colonel in charge of that battery of artillery. I don't think it adds in. Like, if I put a colonel here, I don't think it gives us anything better. Maybe slightly, but it's pretty marginal. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't look like to me like it really goes up at all. It's just if the battery is too large, then you need you need a, a more senior general. In any event, we have two hundred and fifty-five men and a fourteen hundred dollars left over. We'll just go ahead and assign that to this. Oh, we don't have enough money because we don't have enough guns for them. We'll assign it to this brigade because they have the Harper's Ferries. 255. All right, so there you have it. So the third core is about 
3,000 men less than it was before the last battle. The first and second corps are at or above their strengths before the last battle. All of their soldiers are replaced. That allows us to move forward to the first of the minor battles leading up to the actual attack on Washington. Additionally, if we did want a little bit of money, we could sell some of these excess guns. Probably not any of these. Maybe the 1863 Springfields. Um, but we're going to sell some sharps because I have no use for them. We'll sell some burnsides. Likewise, no use for them. We have some Spencer carbines, but we're never going to get enough ma uh, enough of them to matter. Same for those sniper rifles. Frank and Wessons we'll go ahead and sell. And we've got a whole bunch of extra artillery, but we'll hang on to that for now because we might need to replace some artillery losses. Although probably nowhere near as much as we have in our stockpile. So that gives us back to $36,000. We have 75 prestige. We can spend 55 of it. So we could spend some of it on some more CS Richmond rifles or some more 24-pound howitzers or 20-pound parrots. We've got a lot of good guns we could buy. Uh, but I'm going to avoid doing any of that right now. And we're going to look at the Battle of Hall's Ferry, which I believe is the first battle that we'll want to look at. It'll be September of 1864. And it looks like we're going to attack uh, Vicksburg, I think. Uh, lift the siege, even though the siege should have ended months ago. Or years ago, actually, in 1863. So let's see what the storyline behind this particular fight is. Well, the Cold War, in the Cold War, the Soviets had a general for everything because everyone got promoted from the Great Patriotic War. But certainly going into that war, all the generals had been killed. Or not all of them, but many of them. All right, let's take a quick sip here and then take a look at what we've got. All's Ferry Road, 14 September, 1864. It is time to counterattack on our western front and regain control of the Mississippi River. The loss of Vicksburg in 1863 has split the Confederacy in two, cutting off the states of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas from the rest of our states. The recapture of the city will not only restore our honor, but most importantly will also reestablish our communications with the Trans-Mississippi Department. This will give us access to valuable resources and supplies from the west that will aid us in our final strike at the federal capital. A part of our forces has been sent north to make the Federals believe that we will attack at Jackson and Granyard Roads. Our plan, however, is to attack at Hall's Ferry Road to the south. It is a well-defended position, and it's going to be a tough and bloody task. But if we break through and secure Hall's Ferry Road, then the Federals will be forced to abandon Vicksburg. I don't know if that's a bunch of gobbledygook and bullshit, or if that's actually true. I don't know enough about the geography around uh, Vicksburg. But interesting premise anyway. Thank you, Ty. I'm uh, glad you're enjoying the streams. Okay, so this looks like it's going to be a tough one. Uh, at least on the left flank, the enemy's going to be largely in the open. But on the right, they've got wood lines and I presume good defenses. You can see here we're assaulting all along the line, so we'll, uh, I'm not terribly optimistic that we won't get our forces slaughtered. Um, we're going to send the second corps in first. The first corps will be our reserve. You can see the enemy is reported to have 43,000 soldiers. That's the intelligence. Uh, we have in 208 guns. We have 67,000 soldiers, but of those, only 34 will be going in first. Uh, we'll have 67,000 and 120 guns um, going into this attack. General, the Hall's Ferry Road is, def is defended by strong, salient work redoubt at the right of the road. Oh, God, look at all those forts. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and a fortified hill to the left. This looks like a fucking nightmare. They've also constructed a smaller redoubt to support the salient work from the west. Well... Lead two of your corps to breach the defenses and secure the road. During the night, our engineers inspected the abandoned trenches from the Federals, a Federal attack of 1863, and they assure us that some of them can be used by your men to approach the enemy. 
Okay. All right. It's coming in on the right here. Artillery. Go ahead and put our artillery there. Oh boy. Let's see about putting some troops in these works. At least kind of gives us a, a jumping off point, I guess. I think I'm going to try and attack on the left side more heavily. It's a little bit more open. There's rough ground all around, but maybe I can gain an advantage doing that. Guys, that position. These guys, the position here. It's already... All right, the, the only thing I'm uncertain of here is as I move these troops into position is if we're moving in and going to get ourselves like shot to pieces because maybe they have additional soldiers around here that we haven't seen. Get them deployed up front a little bit. Looks like there's one more work we can deploy to the front. We'll go ahead and work these guys over here. Kind of extend our flank a bit. We'll move this artillery up here. I think I already have a gun going there, so maybe we'll just put them between the guns. Um, these guns will swing out wide to the right, and we're going to use the trenches for the guns. But presumably these trenches give us, again, like a jumping off point. But, you can see here the enemy has about 1,200 men in this front trench. So, this is going to be a challenge. Let's actually... Alt these guys here in the woods. Okay, so actually, if we're attacking the enemy from these forts, we might actually gain a slight advantage. It appears like we're going to actually have a better... ...chance to hit them. Actually... I'd rather keep my troops more concentrated. Let's abandon this whole leftward movement. We've got five hours, so we've got some time. I think we'll move these guys here. We'll keep right here, and we'll kind of keep bring these guys over to the left. Bring our wagons up here. All right. We're going to swing these troops forward. We're going to move these guys into this house, and we're going to try and break their left flank. The rest of these troops are moving in here. Move our artillery in. So Stockton, you can see, is actually killing more men than he's losing. And we're going to kind of avoid moving anybody over here to the far right. We're going to try and break and take the objective on the left first. We're swinging some of our troops around this way to really stack up on their left. Alright, Avril's losing more men than he's killing. Let's get you guys up here, pick it into the wood line. We're going to really try and focus on Landrum here on the left. We're going to move Doles in behind. And we'll also move these other brigades, which are coming up slowly. Again, we've kind of got a refused line over here. These troops aren't doing anything yet, but it's just to kind of secure our flank here. Stockton. Wright can move into Stockton's position if he needs to, but it appears like Stockton's got a good defensive work that's going to help him not lose more men than the enemy. Or just took a rough volley there. The Langram just got ravaged on that last last shot. Alright, so we broke their left. Pickett's gonna move up. My Goot's gonna move up. You can see there's another line behind them. But at least we've outflanked this initial position. Pickett move up into that housing area. Avril as well. Or Avril. 
more is gonna provide some assistance here. We've already got a couple of brigades shooting at Burnbridge, who I think will also break here soon. Pick it in very good cover here. 77 cover here, so he can deal with Lawler. My goot's almost behind Burnbridge, so there you go. Get a volley off before he gets out of there more. Damn. Alright. Well, we broke their left a little bit better now. We're going to have my goot and more move up to try and take on this artillery. We're going to have Reverie move forward. We'll have Lane and Race move up as well. These guys are still kind of preventing any kind of flank attack. I've never played this battle before, so I don't know if there's anything that unexpected that might come our way. It's certainly possible. And one of the lessons I've all I've learned when you when you fight enemy artillery is really or enemy forts is really focusing on the artillery. You can knock it out a little bit more quickly, but it's also going to provide absolute devastating fire to you if you don't make sure to deal with it adequately. Really wish you'd get a nice little volley in here. More, you're going to move to the front of Lawler, who should be about to break with Pickett and Avril focusing on it. All right. No, 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 no. Get back. You guys, again, we're getting a little bit crowded here, but I don't... I mean, two volleys into... Rivery just got killed. Two volleys into that artillery is great, but I do not want to attack this force head-on. So we're going to bring some additional reserves from our right over. We've got these two brigades swinging over that we'll bring up. Johnson, you're going to close up a bit. We'll bring the ammo wagons forward. Goals, you're, you're, you're in good shape here. I don't know if he can hit the artillery from here or not. It doesn't look like it. So my good's more or less just securing the flank from enemy fire. Lawler should be about ready to break, though. And when he does, we can go up and over. They've got another trench line behind it. But hopefully we can really start getting around this enemy flank. Yeah, but I'm not too worried about those skirmishers. Maybe it's just me being the butcher. Move some troops forward here. No, my good. Don't do that. Don't get closer. Run back that way. Let's bring our artillery forward as well. We'll bring these guns up a bit. Move one infantry brigade. We'll move Wright's brigade forward. I don't know who's meleeing who. Looks like we did break Lawler's brigade. Okay, read these guys in this trench or in this house line. I don't know if I want to move anyone further forward. We'll leave right where he is. All right, you can see we just took out that artillery battery. Or at least we drove it back. I'd hope to destroy it. That would be ideal. All right, Burbridge is in the open. I want you guys to focus on him. Move these reserves forward. All right, there goes that artillery. Almost destroyed, not quite. It feels very much like a World War I battle in that we're kind of advancing slowly. Lane, why do you keep going? There's no reason to get that close to the enemy. Just... Pickett and Doles. The challenge here is there's a little bit more open ground in front of this next trench line, so the enemy won't be quite as easy to take... Uh, I don't think. Okay, shifter fire. You guys focus on him. Avril, more. Take out Lauderal. There you go. He's sticking around. Wow. Commendable, sir. Commendable. Alright. 
extending our flank. Our second core is arriving, and yet I don't feel like we need them quite yet. Um, Wright is doing good, reducing McGinnis' strength. Amon is a little bit too close. We'll have him fall back. I don't want him engaging these guys. I go move these guys over this way. Pickett, did he just get driven back? No, he's just shifting. He must just be shifting because he's too... There's no... He hasn't lost enough men to actually get driven back yet. The enemy is charging us? Wow. I'm happy that they will... I'm... I welcome that. Kind of keeping the second core back a bit. I suppose I could move some of these troops into some of these earthworks. But... More than happy for the enemy. Why is Reed losing so many men? I don't know why the enemy did that. That was pretty silly. Alright, we'll move those three brigades from the core over here. We'll move our artillery up as well. But they are starting to kind of advance a little bit. Which to me seems idiotic, but go ahead and do that. Lose your, lose your casualties, that's fine. All right, we've got two brigades somewhat shielded in this wood line here going at uh, Matthew's brigade. And then at that point, I think we can really start trying to get up and around this objective here. We can roll this line up a bit. The problem is they've got another redoubt here in the rear that's providing support. What does a draw give us anyway? West redoubt, the salient work, Hall's Ferry. So, taking two of the three gives us a draw. Or at least 50% casualties on them. Alright. Alright, so that artillery brigade just got destroyed. Pickett's gonna go up and around. Revere's gonna go up and over. Race will move into that house. And we're gonna start moving in on the salient position here. So we've actually got some good cover moving toward the salient, I think. We're going to have to kind of focus our fire, but um, I'd like to bring some of these guys in closer, some of this artillery in closer. I don't really want you moving at the double, though. All right. Our last reinforcements have arrived. That's fine. We still have four hours. We've really got no indication that the enemy has any reinforcements coming. You can see here we've got four brigades firing in on Benton. I'm not even using half my my troops at this point. I guess I'll just move them up to be closer to the line. We just lost Major General Eddie Reed, but we've got more than enough generals. We don't really need to worry about that. Why are you moving in like that? I didn't... I wanted you to shoot at the guy... Oh, you can't reach them? Is that why? All right, Benton's been driven off the flank of the salient. Getting a couple of good volleys in on him, too, in the open. Reverier just, uh... Revere. I don't know why I keep calling him Reverier. Revere just took a devastating volley. Pickett's in pretty good cover there. He can take care of Lauer there, looks like. I presume. All right, go ahead and attack that artillery. Move our own artillery forward in kind of the Napoleonic fashion. We could use some more reserves in here, so we'll bring some of this infantry that we've just brought up into the uh, into our left flank. All right, the salient shouldn't be too difficult, I don't think. We just drove that artillery off. So we've got Slack's brigade just routed. Very good. All right, we're gonna move Vaughn in over on Dole's flank. We're gonna move two of these brigades over on the flank because I am gonna wanna go after that other objective here very shortly. But we'll advance through the salient. Try and take it. We'll advance these three brigades more directly. We've also got a whole bunch of additional troops coming in over here. I'm just kind of bringing troops forward. I 
My computer feels a little bit laggy. I hope it's not too uh, apparent here. It's been running a little bit slow today. Nothing to do with this game. It was doing that before. All right, I want you in this house. I don't want you exposing your flank. The challenge here is making sure that the left wing of our advance doesn't expose its flank to the enemy as, advance, as it advances on the objective. All right, let's artillery forward. The objective here, the salient objective, should just about be ours. Okay, we already drove them back. The salient is falling. We've secured Hall's Ferry Road. Our, oh, they're they're advancing into those works, but they're not there yet. What are you guys doing, my goot? I didn't tell you to charge. I don't think. Stuart, Benning. All right, you guys move in these tree lines over here. You move into this area. All right, everybody, that's going to do it right there. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video at this exact moment. We'll pick up this next time around. Uh, the Battle of Hall's Ferry is underway. The final campaign for Washington is underway. And so far, things are going reasonably well. We've overwhelmed the federal left. We've taken the first objective, but we've got a hard slog against us. Still, I'm reasonably optimistic that before long, we'll be in Washington and fighting for the southern uh, nation to finally win its independence. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up right here. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.